Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to look at block spring collisions uh, that occur in a horizontal direction, not vertical. Uh, we'll get into vertical ones later. So let's look at a problem where you have a 0.8 kilogram block that's moving across a frictionless surface at um, 1.2 meters per second, and it's moving towards an ideal spring that has a spring constant of 50 Newton meters. So you can see that in the question here. Now, this is going to be indicated by case A below. So in the picture, you're going to see that's case A below. We're going to answer a couple questions. One is calculate the maximum compression. So when this block slams into the spring, the spring will compress. What is the maximum compression that occurs? Um, and then the second one is calculate the speed of the block when the block is compressed by 10 centimeters. So when it's compressed by 10 centimeters, now that obviously assumes that the block's maximum compression is more than 10 centimeters. And after the block is compressed and then pushes the block back, calculate its speed as it leaves the block. That's case D. So we're going to do case A, case C, B, and D. Now let's look at the situation and talk about what we see in this. So if you're following along, you'll notice a couple of things here. You're going to notice um, that in case A right here, You've got a block that has a specific mass and it's got a specific velocity and it's going to hit this spring. X equals zero is the equilibrium position that you see right there. Now, what you'll notice here is that the energy of the system is entirely kinetic. Okay. And you'll see below um, that if you look below here, you're going to see that there is a total energy um, equation. Okay. Now the total energy equation for the system. So this first part is the system up here. Okay. It says EK1 plus EJ1, EG1 plus ES1 equals EK2 plus EG2 plus ES1, uh, ES2. Okay. What this says is that the initial kinetic energy of the system plus the gravitational energy of the system, plus the spring energy of the system initially that is equal to whatever the kinetic energy of the system is afterwards, plus the gravitational energy afterwards, plus the um, spring energy afterwards. Now, since we're in a horizontal sy system, the gravitational energy will subtract off with this energy here. So they will subtract off from each other. So we don't even have to worry about them. They're going to just cancel each other out, okay? And, you know, the canceling out of those two is because whatever gravitational energy, so however high off the ground this is, it's still that high off the ground over here. So therefore, there's no delta, delta H. So therefore, they just cancel each other out. So we're not, we're not even going to include these in these types of problems. So really, this situation is EK1 plus ES1 equals EK2 plus ES2. Okay. So we are ignoring the gravitational energy because there is no change in it. Problems later with inclined planes or vertical directions, the gravitational energy cannot be ignored, so you've got to take that into account. All right, so why is it that up here it just says E equals one-half mva squared? Well, let's think about it. The kinetic energy of the block, so down here, the kinetic energy of the block is half mv1 squared, and that's so a1 whatever. There's no spring energy. The spring is not compressed at this point, so this is zero. The um, the spring system here, uh, there is no kinetic energy of the spring in the block, and there is no, um, sorry, the kinetic energy uh, here is zero, and the kinetic energy of the spring over here is also, there's no spring energy, so it's also zero. So all of the energy of the system is simply EK1, okay? And that's obviously equal to EK2 because it's, it's the system's just moving. So these two are the same and it's just equal to the kinetic energy. So the whole system has a maximum energy of whatever the kinetic energy of that block is. And again, we're assuming a frictionless environment. Okay, well, let's look at as the block starts to compress. Well, as the block starts to compress, some energy is now getting stored into the spring. So it says here that the energy in the system at this point is one half mv squared mv2 squared plus one half k x uh, b squared so what you'll see is when we look at the energy of this system 
the total energy of the system was just EK, and it now equals whatever the kinetic energy of the block spring system is plus the gravitational, uh, sorry, plus the spring energy. So what they're looking at over here is now we're seeing that there's a bit of kinetic energy of the block in the spring plus the energy being stored into the spring. So what happens is some of this kinetic energy is being decreased. So this is decreasing and this is increasing. So the spring energy is going up, the kinetic energy is dropping, but the two energies together is going to exactly equal this initial kinetic energy. So at this point here, it's that plus that, or sorry, that would equal those two. Now, at maximum compression, all of this kinetic energy is stored into the spring. So all the initial kinetic energy gets stored all into the spring because there's no kinetic energy if you were at maximum compression. And there's still, at the beginning, there was no spring energy. Okay. After it compresses, well, it says here that the energy is equal to, so the total energy is equal to the um, initial energy of the system, which is equal to the initial kinetic energy. So that's obvious, right? So if after the collision, if the total energy was EK and there's no spring energy left because it's uncompressed, it's pushed itself back, then all the energy comes back as the initial spring energy. So therefore, the block would leave at exactly the same speed that it came in at. So we've already solved question C just by thinking about it logically. So the total energy of the system is equal to the kinetic energy. During collision, the total energy, which was the initial kinetic energy, gets divvied up between the kinetic energy that's decreasing the, uh, the spring energy, which is increasing. You eventually reach a maximum spring energy where there's no kinetic energy left. It then starts to uncompress. And during uncompression, it, the kinetic energy starts to increase. The potential energy starts to decrease. And eventually, all of the energy comes back out, assuming no friction loss and no sound loss, and no deformation loss, all that sort of stuff, comes back as the same amount of kinetic energy. OK, so what we can do now is start to solve those questions so we can look at the solutions for those problems so i'm just going to do it on a separate sheet of paper all right so question a so question a is asking us um calculate the maximum compression okay now when we're calculating the maximum compression at max compression ek2 equals zero okay so let's look at the equation ek1 plus es1 equals ek2 plus es2 now we left out the eg because it's staying in a horizontal direction now there was no spring energy at the beginning it's gone so we know that the total energy of the system is simply EK1. Well, EK1 was MV1 squared over 2. EK2, well, oh, look, at maximum compression, this is also 0. So it equals all of the kinetic energy gets stored into the spring. And because it's the maximum, we write it as max. Now, the nice simple thing to do here is you've got the twos in the bottom, just multiply everything by two, and you can get a nicer looking, just easier to work with. I use delta x max or delta x's. You can just use x if you want. Um, it's up to you. All right, at this point, um, we're trying to find out what that value is. So delta x max, and if you're not using the deltas, you just write x max equals, and it's going to be m v1 squared over k, but then I have to square root it. And so that's that's almost always how you find it. So all the kinetic energy is, is put into it. The mass was 0 0.8. The speed was 1.2. So we go 1.2 squared times 0.8 equals this divided by the k value, which was 50. And we take the square root, and we get that the maximum compression is 0 0.152 meters, or approximately 15 centimeters. OK, so that's it. B, 
we're now trying to find um, the speed at delta x two of um, zero point one meters. So, what is the speed of the block when it when the when the spring is partially compressed? Clearly, the maximum compression was fifteen centimeters, so we're not at maximum compression. So we're going to be able to find the speed at that point. So we write out, we say, well, the initial spring energy, the, sorry, the initial kinetic energy plus the initial spring energy has to equal the second, the system energy, kinetic energy at that point, plus the spring energy at that point. Well, there was no spring energy at the beginning, so that's gone. And now we just have EK1. Now there is kinetic energy. Some of the, the kinetic energy is going to be dropping and the um, the spring energy is going to be going up. Okay, so the initial energy here is MV1 squared over 2. MV2 squared over 2 plus K delta X2 squared over 2. Now I'm going to show you something on the side here afterwards just to give you an idea of what's happening. It'll give you a nice visual. In fact, we could do it right now. Let's figure out what mv1 squared divided by 2 is. So v1 squared times 0.8 divided by 2. So the total energy of the system is 0.576 joules. Okay. Now let's find it. Uh, well, we don't know it at this point. So this is our question mark. Okay. And plus, and then we know this, the compression is 0.1 squared times the K value is 50. So we go 0.1 squared times 50. And then we times it by, oh, sorry, we divide it by two. And we get 0 0.25 joules. So now look, some of the energy, some of the energy is, is stolen by the spring. Well, how much of that energy has been stolen? You just subtract those two numbers. So the 50, so we go 0 0.57, 6, less 0 0.25. So this is how much energy, 0 0.326 joules of energy is now kinetic energy. That's how much is now, the, the it dropped from 0 0.576 kinetic energy down to that much. Well, if that's mv squared over 2 has to equal that 0 0.326 joules, then the final speed is 2 times 0 0.326 divided by the mass, which was 0 0.8, square rooted, of course. And we're going to end up with, I'll put that, I'll move the screen up in a second, 0 0.326 divided by 0.8 square root is 0 0.90 meters per second approximately. Notice it slowed down, okay? So it slowed down to 0 0.9 meters per second at 0 0.1 compression. Makes sense, it was originally going 1.2 meters per second, we've only compressed it by 0 0.1 meters and therefore it's dropped to a speed of 0 0.9 meters per second. Let me just double check all that. So it's 0 0.1 squared times 50 divided by 2. Yep, okay. So let's see if we get the same answer on the other side. Um, it seems like it would have slowed down more because it should have come to a rest at 15. Um, and so, you know, we can check that if we go 0.15 squared times 50 divided by 2 is 0.5 six two five okay so we did, there's some rounding there so it does it is approximately um if we do 0. 0.152 squared times 50 divided by two you get 0.576 and so it does come to a rest at 15 centimeters in fact it's like 15.2 centimeters so it will work out when we do it so you could have done the, the problem this way as well so now i'm going to show you just how to do it without showing all the energies multiply everything by two We know everything here except for this thing. That's our only thing we don't know. So I'm going to bring some stuff over.
and divide by mass. And because it's, so I've brought this over, made it minus, I've got the V2 squared, so I got to square root this thing. And you see that we've just got the exact same thing over here, right? It's gonna be the same situation. We've found the one energy, subtracted the other energy, divided by the mass, and then we don't have to divide by twos and all that stuff because when we multiply that two up, it gets rid of the two from there. So that's just a fast way of doing it. So V2 equals square root, 0 0.8, 1.2 squared minus 50 times 0 0.1 squared all over 0 0.8. And so if we put this in our calculator, And square root, we get 0 0.90 meters per second. Same answer. Now, for part C, um, you would just use your, you just have to think about part C and just say, well, if the initial kinetic energy was moving at 1.2 meters per second on the way in, and that was a total energy of 0 0.5676, if on the way out, after it uncompresses, there's no spring energy left, then that means that all this energy stayed as the kinetic energy. And then this, you would just, when you solve this through, you would just get V equals 1.2. And because it's plus or minus, you can choose the minus because it's moving in the opposite direction and you would get the same exact solution. All right, so that's how you solve these problems um, with blocks moving in a horizontal direction. It's just an interplay of the kinetic, gravitational, and spring energy before and after. And if if it does involve um, vertical displacements, then you do have to include the gravitational at the top and the gravitational at its lowest point. Usually at the lowest point, we just make it zero, and then we make the h value, the, the maximum height of the object. That's all you need to know. You can do every question now based on this uh, this lesson using energy and springs.